Hi everyone, my name is Agustin from UbiDots and today we'll be talking about IoT and the rise of the solopreneur. So this is a talk we designed as a way to pay tribute to the hundreds of engineers who have chosen a path of independence by creating IoT businesses on their own. And it's also about my two cents as an IoT entrepreneur, the little tips I wish I had known a few years back when co-founding UbiDots. So with that, let's get started with a real story about an IoT entrepreneur. So this is Nick. Nick uh, grew up in a farm in Victoria, Australia, and he had been in the import-export business for the past 20 years. Now, one day he wakes up and he realizes his father was getting to an age where it became more difficult to manage the everyday operations of the farm. So he decides to uh, quit his job, to quit what he was doing for the last 20 years and come back to his family's farm, or better said, come back to his roots. So he begins uh, just uh, optimizing some processes. Uh, he transitioned the whole farm to organic products, which was a, a great step. Uh, and in that uh, process of optimization, he finds out about IoT and LoRaWAN. And in that moment, he was captivated. And of course, the idea of achieving long range communication between uh, sensors and gateways made a lot of sense, uh, given the agricultural nature of his application and the size of the farm. So he begins tinkering with uh, LoRaWAN devices to solve very specific problems in his farm, like uh, it, is the gate open or closed? Uh, is my electric fence uh, enabled or not? Do all animals have uh, water at all times? And in that process, an idea comes to mind. What if he used IoT not only to solve his problems, but also to sell this as a solution to the neighboring farmers that he and his dad had known for years? And this is exactly how Farmo was born. Today, just a year later, Farmo is enabling already 10 farms in Victoria, Australia to streamline their processes and increase the yields overall and efficiency overall. So like Nick, uh, there are, as I said at the beginning, hundreds of IoT entrepreneurs who are utilizing all these tools and enablers that we have in this digital age to create very compel compelling value offers uh, while still running a, a one-man show or a one-man business. So let's dig a little deeper into what that demographic group of independent workers look like. So to my surprise, when I first began doing this presentation, is the size. So around 30% of the work population in US and Europe is already independent. And Another fun fact or interesting fact is that more than 80% of them are actually happier working on their own than they were while working at a full-time job. So the good news here, guys, is not only you're not alone in this journey, chances are you will have a very good time while pursuing this endeavor. Now, let's zoom in a bit more into this group. We'll find out that not all of them are using technology yet but 30% are using digital tools to get their jobs done. This ranges from uh, sharing economy application, Uber drivers, Airbnb hosts, freelancers, they all fit into the work uh, independent worker category. Uh, online uh, entrepreneurs uh, selling goods uh, through e-commerce stores. And most recently, uh, what I call the application enablement tools uh, these are entrepreneurs who are using all the, the tools that our internet is giving us uh, from calendar uh, optimization uh, applications to no-code applications such as Bubble or AppSheet, recently acquired by Google, uh, to launch uh, software offerings that in another time, maybe a few years back, would have taken thousands of engineering hours to develop. So IoT is not alone, of course. There are also a lot of players in our market enabling a lot of uh, the processes that before would have taken uh, a very long time to develop or a team to do it. 
the reason uh, guys like Nick are able to launch these uh, businesses without outside capital or without hiring uh, a lot of uh, engineers is because of these enablers that can help you uh, create a production ready application and go to market from week one. So we, in this next six minutes, we will uh, review what those IoT businesses have in common. What are those common traits that are helping these IoT entrepreneurs thrive? So the first one is a problem worth solving. The second, a large enough market. And the third, a subscription business model. Let's dig in. The first one is a problem worth solving. So here's the checklist. First, are you solving a real business headache? Are there real measurable consequences to inaction or to the absence of your solution? A good way to say this is, are you selling a painkiller or are you just selling a vitamin? Are you selling tech just because it's cool or are you solving something really worth solving? Pablo from Datasense in Argentina is helping hospitals in, in Mendoza, his home city, to monitor temperature in the vaccine supply chain. Now, in, in, when this cold chain is disrupted, then the, the vaccines can uh, be damaged and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, so there's a real consequence, not to mention uh, the risk of administering a vaccine that has been outside the cold chain uh, to a patient and the potential risk and, and consequences. Uh, second, is your problem unavoidable? Sometimes there are some regulations that suddenly create a business opportunity. For example, uh, Valentin from Switzerland is helping Swiss regulators know whether constructors are damaging the soil or not. So he installs a very specialized sensor to know the soil humidity. And uh, in this way, he can alert the constructor whether they can work on a particular day or not, just to make sure that the soil is not damaged. Uh, Sec the third part is, is the problem underserved. Sometimes uh, the technology just enables uh, very rapidly a new way of doing things. So this was the case for Roberto in, uh, from his company Sosteco, who is using uh, LoRaWAN and IoT and UbiDots to help the Park of Malaga authorities save water and garden maintenance fees by creating a smart irrigation system. Now, smart irrigation, sorry, irrigation systems have been around for a long time, but the smart portion to it is just catching up. So sometimes your customers know that there's a new way of doing things, but they just have to catch up and it is in your hands as an IoT entrepreneur to help them catch up. And lastly, uh, is the problem yours? You know, Nick from Pharma was a great example because he began solving problems in his own farm, uh, which gave him a first hand approach to the solutions that his future customers will expect. So this is a, another way of saying scratch your own niche. And well, some of the greatest companies we all know have been born because they found their founders solved some a problem on their own. A great example is Steve Wozniak. He used to say that he didn't invent the personal computer to change the world. He did it because he wanted a damn computer at his house and it didn't exist back then. So then, you know, Apple was born and, and you know the rest of the story. Secondly, let's talk about the market. So we want to ensure that your market is big enough so that you can have a thriving business. As a rule of thumb in the venture capital world, uh, Venture capitalists are looking for billion dollar opportunities. They want to see evidence that you can execute to 100 million annual recurring revenue, take 10% of, of a global market. But again, this is a different world from the solopreneurship. So what does it mean for, for a solopreneur? So I, first of all, I would be more uh, conservative. I would talk about a local market instead of a global one. I would take 5% instead of 10 and I would aim at a business size of half a million dollar to start with within three or five years. So that would give us a uh, target market size of 10 millions. And believe me, there are way more five, 10, 20 million dollar opportunities 
than there are billion dollar ones. Now that you know you have a large enough market, uh, you have to estimate it. So the best way to do it is to take an actionable metric. Don't use these crazy um, market reports that talk about billions of connected devices and how they, they will change our lives because it's not an actionable metric. Um, I even did this meme. Um, I know it's a bit harsh. My wife said it, it would be too harsh to put here, but uh, I think it makes a point, you know, don't do yourself a favor. Don't take these crazy numbers and start from a bottom up approach. Take a metric that is based on your business, be it amount of farms, amount of hospitals, amount of households with pets, and then start from, from the ground up by uh, estimating an actual market size by multiplying the expected recurring revenue times the amount of units that you see in your market. So let's see how that looks like for our friend Nick. Uh, there are more than 80K farms in Australia, 17K in his region. 5% of that would be around 800 farms multiplied by an average of $50 per month will give us a half a million business. Now let's talk about the business model. So in the business world, the recurring revenue has become sort of a holy grail. Everybody wants it. Even a lot of brick and mortar businesses are looking for ways to go from one off projects, you know, one off sales to recurring monthly fees uh, as a way to transform their businesses and join the subscription economy. The good news for us is IoT is very compatible with this model for one simple reason. Your value offer has a lot of moving pieces that just have to be maintained on a monthly basis. There's no way you could just install this and forget about it. So let's go real quick through, through your value offer. You know, from hardware to cloud, you got devices, you got connectivity, uh, you have to integrate. By the way, there will be a, a workshop later about the UbiDots and TTI integration. There's a lot of moving pieces, as you can see, not to mention the support and the maintenance and the on-site uh, presence that you have to have face to face with your customers to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So what have we seen in, in terms of uh, recurring subscriptions from $1 per month to hundreds of dollars per month? It really depends on your sector. Uh, agriculture uh, being one of the, of, of the ones more price sensitive. Um, smart, smart cities, for example, uh, when you have hundreds of thousands of smart street, light, street lights, for example, then they might be hesitant to pay a dollar per device. So in those cases, we might be talking below a dollar per device. Uh, and then in the upper side, you got uh, very industrial applications or niche applications, healthcare, for example, in some cases, where you have very expensive equipment that you have to monitor. And in those cases, you know, it makes sense to, to for your customers to pay uh, 50 or 100 or even more dollars per device per month. So the message here, guys, is this is the hell of a value offer. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that in your region, not a lot of people know about all of these moving pieces. Uh, and this is uh, the hard uh, coded, um, coded or codified knowledge uh, around engineering. Uh, there's a, a, a huge portion uh, of empirical knowledge. The, all the little things you learn while you're out in the fields, the things that the exper only experience can give you, such as getting the, the right antenna positioning, the right, uh, you know, dealing with RF noise, dealing with weather, dealing with, uh, you know, the right enclosure for your devices. So that's a hell of value offer, and you might as well uh, capture some value from it. So uh, going back to our example from Nick, um, it is viable to become cash flow positive uh, with 100 farms, for example, if assuming we sell it at $50 per farm. But we know, you know, there's a lot of upsell opportunities on a per customer basis. Uh, so we could be really looking at a business that is cash flow positive in, the, in, a, in a short term without the need of outside capital. Uh, so this was uh, the end of our talk. I hope you got a lot of practical advice on how to make this journey 
more uh, amicable and successful, if you will. Uh, I know is no, by no means uh, an easy undertaking. There's a lot of uh, sweat and tears uh, that go into it, not just time and effort. Uh, a lot of all-nighters that you have to pull to make things work and even sometimes just luck. So if you ever want to reach out and just trade notes about your IoT business, uh, feel free to, to send me a note. And well, I hope you continue to enjoy this 24-hour LoRaWAN Marathon. Bye-bye.